Okay, guys, welcome back. I'm doing another flip cut pour for you today. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've been doing them all the time, and a few people have said how all their favourite pouring artists are doing other things, which they are, and I know I miss watching the flip cups too from my favourite pourers. So, um, I mean, I've been doing swipes for three years, I've been doing flip cups for two years. Um, I, I like them, you know, thought I'd move on and try something else, but I will keep coming back to the flip cups because they are my favourites. So I'll do another one for you today. As usual, 60% glue, 40% water. This is Elmer's glue oil. You can use school glue, white craft glue, whatever you like. And I have got some gorgeous sort of pinks and purples and a bit of turquoise today. Uh, I am going to put in... We'll do a little bit less, three drops of Spot On in each colour. I find I don't need a lot of cells, but you know, I'd rather have the cells that are there. I'd like them to be pretty cells. Um, and I can stretch them to make them bigger. So let's reduce the amount of oil and just see if we can get a better result. Oh, I think four fell in that last one as I was lifting it. Now this is dioxazine purple. I'm using all global today, global paints, except for the white, which is the Montmartre white, because I know it won't split. So, um, equal parts of pouring medium to global paint. A couple of the colours were a bit thick. I had to add a, a splash of water. Uh, this is just a really pale aqua. It's called a marina. The cobalt here was really thin. I had to add an extra scoop of paint to bring it to the same consistency. So when I do my ribbon on top, it sits there for about three seconds before it disappears. One, two, three. Uh, with the cobalt, it was gone after about one and a half seconds. So I had to add a little bit more paint. One, two, three. And it's gone so that's how I work out my consistency if, if it's still sitting on top you know at four or five seconds it's too thick and if it's gone in a second or two it's too thin one two three that one's a little bit on the thin side one two three oh no it's still there a little bit of a trace of it's still there at three right uh, this pink is called hibiscus and then down the end there is the dioxazine purple which I make myself this one in the middle is plum which I also make myself I have got a video on how to make all different colors so just look back if you want to see it uh, cobalt that's just regular cobalt and the marina is that pale aqua and then of course we have a white and spot-on treadmill silicone I gave it a bit of a clean my label so you can read it <laughs> Okay, let's get to layering. Um, I think I'm just going to do them all the same, but I'll just I'll put one at one end and two at the other and drag them through. Because I got all confused last time when I tried to do different layers in different cups. <laughs> Not the brightest spark at the moment. Let's move these down so I've got a bit of room to move. Now I'm going, as you can see, dark, light, dark, light, dark. Dark, light, dark. This one's, well, it's light of a different shade, but it's darker than the white, and then back to the pinky colour, and then it'll go back to the darker purple again. So, yeah, just trying to separate them. I wouldn't have, um, well, I personally wouldn't have the two blues next to each other they're too similar and these two I wouldn't have them together because they are also too similar so I just spread them out Put a different color a lighter color between the two darks and that's how I do it doesn't mean that's how you have to do it but that's just how I like to do it nice covering on each just try and drizzle it in so it sits on top and doesn't fall straight through so you just have a little drizzle, which means it's lighter, so it stays on top. If you pour a big amount in, it would go straight, straight through, so little bits. Now 
And if you can get closer to the actual paint, that would help too, rather than holding it right up high. Because the higher you hold it, the further it's got to go. And it kind of makes more of an impact when it hits, if it's from up high. Right, our second layer. I'm trying to fill my end cup up. Poor little thing, always has less paint. I'm trying to have them equal, but always has less. Love this dioxazine purple. One of the ladies in my last class, actually, my beginner's pouring workshop, she used these colours. I can't remember what order she did, but they were really pretty. And I said to her, I'm going to make a video using those colours. She's picked up her painting now, so I can't even show you the painting but it was really gorgeous. It's nice when different people have ideas on different colour schemes. Like, I mean, I've used pinks and purples before, but not these exact ones together. So it's really nice getting a different perspective on colours. And shoot a fly. Did you see that fly? There's an Aussie fly for you. Right, plum. So my puppies are all doing well. Those of you who are following my breeding of late. Um, I don't do a lot of litters. This, you know, this year spring, well the spring's just been, so we had spring matings and our summer babies. Um, and then there'll be nothing again until this time next year. So a few litters at the moment, but then nothing again for a year. Why are my cups so full? So yeah, the puppies are doing really well. Zoe's just got her one little black boy that she's doting over. She's a very good mum. And little Bronte, her milk's come in and... She's got her two little puppies that she's looking after, a boy and a girl. So yeah, everybody's happy. It's getting closer to Christmas, hey? Is everyone organized? I know I'm not. Still got some more shopping to do. Christmas shopping for people. It's hard trying to find gifts sometimes, isn't it, for people? I like it when they can give you some ideas, a little list, especially the kids. <laughs> Actually, my daughter, my youngest daughter, Gemma, it's her birthday, Christmas Eve. So I need to find two lots of presents for her, which is even more difficult. And it wasn't very good timing on my behalf, was it? Christmas Eve baby. Went into hospital, or oh, actually I went into, let me see if I can remember, it was a long time ago, it's only 20, how old is she? She was 25. <laughs> um, went into labour at one o'clock in the afternoon. My husband was showing this man our car because we were trying to sell the car, get a new car. So he was out um, showing this man the car and they got a flat tire or something happened um, and I'm at home in labor thinking oh my god get home David I'm gonna have this baby and this was you know before mobile phones back in the, <laughs> the dark ages so I couldn't get hold of him and I'm you know jumping all over the place being in labor because it's the third child you know it's coming pretty quick so anyway he finally got home and raced to the hospital got to the hospital at about three o'clock in the afternoon she was born at about six o'clock that evening. Um, and then a couple of hours later, I went home, <laughs> discharged myself. There was no way that I was gonna be in hospital for Christmas day. So she was fine, I was fine. We all went home and had a lovely Christmas. <laughs> uh, yes, remember the times. Okay, let's do this, you guys. Oh, pretty colours. Now, this one I was going to do that, but backwards, wasn't I? I shouldn't get this blobby bit here from the 
the last bit of paint that comes out of the cup. Just can't help it. So if I drag too fast, I don't empty the cups. So I have to kind of slow down at the end, but then the paint falls from the top of the cup down and makes that. But that's all right, I, I will tip that off anyway. Let's do this last one. Hopefully we'll get a little bit more pink. Mm, not really. Not a lot more pink. I'm going to be tipping the paint over the corners anyway. So this is just going to help the paint flow over the edges because it's, the corners are now wet. So it just helps it flow. Oh, look, two little eyes. Hello. Look at back at me. Pretty colours. Okay, there's my corner catcher. This is the biggest area here that needs filling in. So let's start with this side, hey? I try not to lose too much paint over the edge just yet. So, so I kind of go more this way rather than straight down. Sand again, just into the corner there and back. Because I'm going to tilt over there later anyway, if I want to. Look at those colours, aren't they pretty? Now these blobs here, I probably didn't mix my silicone in enough. See what I, I mean about those blobs of silicone? <clears throat> That's what happens when you don't stir enough. So, example A, example B. All right, I don't need that anymore. Let's clean that off. Righto, uh, let's give it a torching. Now, I've got less oil in it this time, so I'm going to torch even more carefully. I say that every time, and I still stuff it up. <laughs> I get too close in certain areas. I will keep trying. See, I can't even get close enough to pop that bubble because then I know I'll be too close. So that's how high up you need to be. You can't even be close enough to be popping bubbles. Oh, there he goes. It was a big bubble. Whoops. Oh, look at this. I'm too close in here. okay there's no caterpillars just did a little wave of heat over the top it wasn't too concentrated I'm trying to get this corner here there's a few there back up to this corner over here a little bit more in here to see about in there Okay, I'm just going crazy with the torch. I wanted less. I've still got heaps. How did that happen? Okay. <clears throat> um, now, I will tilt some of that off because there's a bit much there. And I, I do have plenty of paint so that I can move everything over. Whoops, you're going too fast, Julie. Slow down. Slow down, you move too fast. You gotta make the moment last. <laughs> so how it goes? All right, let's see if we can get rid of these two big blobby bits. Oh, they're gone. How about that little caterpillar? Two eyeballs don't bother me. Let's keep the eyeballs. trying to straighten up my lines a little bit if you've got a curve down here you kind of have to take the paint back down and then move it hopefully you saw what I did it was pretty fast so I didn't actually explain it but 
hopefully you saw what I was doing. There we go. That was pretty fast. I probably should have slowed down a little bit. But hey, when you're on a roll, you just go for it, hey? So what do you think of those colours? Hey, they're pretty, aren't they? Oh, look at that eyeball. I'm going to have to take you down to show you that one. So there's a couple of cells that got a bit out of shape. I'm going to give it a light torching just to see if I can get some little tiny cells to come up in this area up here. A few little ones here and there. I like the little ones in contrast to the big ones sometimes, especially when they're quite big. Get a few little guys in. them uh, and now I will just move them just a little bit to see if I can get them growing just back and forth not moving them a lot really just gotta be really careful I don't overstretch that middle cup's been a little bit overstretched for some reason all right that will do now let me just check my corners Feel as if I rushed that a bit. Normally I'm take my time when I I tilt. But uh, the paint just sort of was moving in a in the direction I was wanting it to go, so I just thought, oh well, we'll just go for it. So what do you think? It's lovely and bright, isn't it? Gorgeous. Love the colours. Look at this cobalt here with the bright pink in it. It's really pretty. I know, stop fiddling. Mm. I kind of feel as if I just want to open some of these cells up those are quite small there and then in the middle is quite big I probably didn't tip enough off the sides when I was doing the sides you know what I mean and because I did two cups that way and one cup that way I get this hourglass look because quite often people will say to me why don't you put one cup, cup the other way and there is a reason why I don't do it and now you can see that reason because these two had already settled and then I came through with that one so it's made this like that like a like a V I guess um, and that's why I don't tend to to do that but that middle section is a lot brighter it's like really catches your eye it's actually prettier than these two these two have got a lot of purple in them I um, mean that one's got that bit of cobalt through the center mm, I'll just leave it Okay, let me take you down. So anyway, that's why I tend to always flip and drag from the one side. So now you can see why. You can see the effects that changing it up does. Okay, let's go down for a close-up. I've got workers here today. Doing a retaining wall, sleeper retaining wall down my driveway down to the granny flat. Oh, I should take you down and show you the granny flat, shouldn't I, at some stage? I've been talking about it for months. It's actually pretty much done now. The shower screen went in yesterday. And the um, splashback in the little kitchenette's done. Actually, I might go and 
take a little video after I've done this and then I can show you in my next video what it's looking like. So here, where I've got a little bit of a cluster, I've got a bit close, but the cells are still pretty. Look, I didn't get too close. The caterpillars didn't form. Um, but I've got rings. Oh, there's that eyeball I was telling you about. Look at that eyeball. <laughs> Hello. Oops, we're going a bit blurry. So my favourite spot is that there where the bright pink and the turquoisey cobalt colour are mixing in. Look at those little cells. How pretty are they? Those are, I've got those when I torched afterwards. So just a little sprinkle of cells between the big ones. And uh, I do like that on some of my paintings, especially up the edges here where, you know, it's a bit blank. You get the little cells. So there you go. Do you like that one? Pretty colours, hey? Again, my white didn't show up a lot. It um, The white tends to blend with the other colours and just make them all a little bit more pale rather than actually giving me white cells. Oh, that light's annoying, isn't it, above there? Oh, what can you do? What can you do? Pour in the dark. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching again. Not getting sick of me yet, are you? <laughs> oh my gosh. 600 odd videos later. I'm sure you guys must be sick of my voice by now. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to go and video the granny flat downstairs. And I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.